welcome to my channel. In this video I'm going to speak about tetanus. It's a disease caused by Clostridium tetani, a gram-positive spore-forming anaerobic bacterium. Actually, it's not this ugly bacterium the cause of clinical signs, but its toxins. Clostridium tetani produces two toxins, tetanolysin that damages tissues and tetanospasmin that, inside damaged tissues, becomes activated and it's the well-known tetanus neurotoxin. Bacteria contaminate wounds and from there the neurotoxin penetrates the organism. At the neuromuscular junction it causes paralysis and there is a retrograde transport to the central nervous system that can take up to 14 days. In the central nervous system the toxin binds to the snare protein complex causing inhibition of the release of GABA. Thus there is sustained excitatory discharge from the alpha motor neurons and lack of an inhibitory mechanism. This causes rigidity, as you can see from the picture of this poor donkey. The posture is quite typical and it's called a sawhorse stance. There is also trismus or risus sardonicus, prolapse of the third eyelid and fever. The lack of GABA inhibition causes also the autonomic storm with hyperactivity and stimulation of both sympathetic and parasympathetic systems. Diagnosis is mainly based on clinical signs because it's difficult to isolate tetanus toxin. Horses are a species that is very sensitive to even a small amount of toxin. Prognosis is poor, with a reported mortality of more than 50% of cases. Treatment is supportive, waiting for the regeneration of the snare protein complex. It's important to maintain animals in a quiet environment because any stimulus can cause further contractions that won't have any inhibition since there is a worsening of clinical signs. To eliminate circulating toxin, tetanus antitoxin can be administered, but this will not have any effect on the toxin that is already inside the central nervous system. Antibiotics against anaerobic bacteria can be used, but sometimes at the onset of clinical signs, bacteria are not present anymore. Sedatives and muscle relaxants help to maintain the animal calm and contrast the involuntary contractions. The condition is quite painful, to use analgesia is needed, together with any kind of general support, especially if the horse is unable to eat and drink or is recumbent. How to prevent the disease? With the vaccine. It's very effective and considering the severity of the disease, it's really worth to vaccine where the vaccine is available. Well, talking about tetanus, I have to speak about a small UK charity society based in the Gambia, where I worked a few years ago. The cases of tetanus that I saw were all in Africa, as the vaccine was not available there. Gambia Horse and Donkey Trust is a society that helps local people to treat their animals, in particular horses and donkeys that are used as working animals. For a family in the Gambia, having a sick horse or donkey is a severe economic loss, not just because of the cost of the treatment, but because while waiting for the animal to recover, they cannot transport their goods to the market nor work in the fields. Now, the work of this society relies on donation of supporters and on the job of volunteers, both of which have become difficult during these times of coronavirus. Any help will be extremely useful, and if you want to follow the activity of this society, you can search Gambia Horse and Donkey Trust on Facebook. It's also possible to contribute while shopping on Amazon at no cost for you. For those of you who are interested in an experience of volunteering, you can find all the information on this web page and write to this email. Thanks for watching! Bye!